keyword cupcakes. In honor of National Cupcake Day on June 14th, we're gonna make three different video game inspired dog cupcakes. Wish me luck. Tongue twister time. Clever, colorful, confusing cupcakes. 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 Welcome to Chaotic Adventures in Baking at Dog Height, times three. To start things off, we're going to try to dogify the Metroid cupcakes by Nerdy Nummies. Hopefully these cupcakes give Arbor energy instead of stealing it. But is there science behind how Metroids attack? The pumpkin cupcakes we're making today are a recipe by Love from the Oven, and the icing recipe is by Recipe Tin. You can find all recipe instructions and links in the description. So, Metroids. Metroids are the titular enemy of the Metroid franchise, with the jellyfish-like larval stage being what we're making today. These little monsters are highly aggressive and feed on the life energy of their prey, somehow stealing all of their energy without leaving any discernible injuries. But how? I have three sci-fi science theories and they all involve a high-energy molecule in our bodies called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP production is fueled in our bodies by the glucose made from the food we eat. Theory 1. Oxygen Deprivation The most efficient version of ATP production involves oxygen, so there's a chance that the Metroids are somehow absorbing all of the oxygen from their victim cells. But since ATP synthesis can happen without oxygen, I have two other theories. Theory 2. Phosphorus When the energy from an ATP molecule is used, the ATP turns into ADP, or adenosine diphosphate. If ATP is like a fully charged battery, ADP is a battery with no charge. So maybe the Metroids are somehow sucking phosphorus out of their prey, removing just enough that the body can't make ATP anymore. Or theory three, <laughs> powerhouses. My final theory has to do with the powerhouse of the cell. Say it with me, we're talking about mitochondria. Mitochondria are little organelles found inside all of our cells and are where ATP is made. So to be really efficient about it, the Metroids could be removing all or most of the mitochondria from their victims' bodies. Science! These pupcakes turned out surprisingly all right, and they passed the taste test, so success all around. Huzzah! Next up, Mr. Cupcake from Fa. Mm, five Nights at Freddy's. Sorry about that. And for what's coming, because today we're talking about the science of jump scares as we make a Nerdy Nummies-inspired FNAF cupcake. This is the same cupcake and base icing recipe as the Metroids, and any other details can be found in the description. Five Nights at Freddy's is a popular horror franchise with a whole lot of jump scares. Jump scares are a staple of the horror genre, keeping us nervously on the edge of our seats since at least the 1930s. Whether in FNAF, Alien, or Jurassic Park, jump scares have four key factors. Character presence, an implied threat that's off screen, an intrusion into the character's space, and speed or pacing. And atmosphere plays a big role too. The atmosphere created leading up to the jump scare primes us, building anticipation and intensifying our fear. Then, when we're, uh, when we're jump scared, our intense fear turns into shock. As this shock dissipates, we still feel residual arousal from the fear, with the intensity of the fear transforming into an intense feeling of relief. Jump scares, and horror games and movies in general, trigger our fight or flight response system, releasing adrenaline to increase our heart rate and breathing, and releasing endorphins, our body's natural painkillers that also just make us feel good. Unlike being in an actual life-threatening situation, horror content lets us feel this excitement and feel-good chemical rush in a safe environment. Ah! All right, I'm ready for this one to be over. As a low sensation seeking individual, I don't really enjoy jump scares and would never play FNAF myself, though it can be fun to watch a high sensation seeking person play them. High sensation seekers find the fear and rush to be thrilling. And for me, it's just fun panicking alongside someone else once in a while. <laughs> These pupcakes turned out honestly kind of scary, which fits the theme. And since Arbor doesn't seem to mind that I was so scared, I forgot to add the teeth. Technically, I think that means this was a success. <laughs> Okay, enough with the horror, let's move on to another reason people play video games. To solve puzzles. Today, we're taking it back to 2007 and making a dog-friendly not a cupcake as we talk about learning physics through the Portal video games. In Portal, players have to navigate a testing facility using a portal gun, all while being bribed with the promise of a delicious cake by a pleasant AI voice, though you quickly come upon scrawled writing on the wall claiming that the cake is a lie. To pay homage to this aged meme, the non-cake cupcake we're making today is a recipe by A Saucy Kitchen, and is only apples, peanut butter, and an egg. Full recipe details in the description. Because of the way the portals work, Portal has been used to help explain physics concepts like acceleration and conservation of momentum to teachers and students alike. Thanks to Portal introducing concepts and mechanics one at a time within the regular gameplay, rather than in a separate tutorial, players get to test and experiment with each mechanic, exploring the possibilities and functions before more complexity and variables are added. 
As a player progresses through the game, they face increasingly difficult puzzles that require them to apply the knowledge gained in the previous levels. This structure of experimentation, learning, and application likely influenced the results found by researchers Shute et al., who showed that eight hours of playing Portal actually improved mental rotation and spatial navigation skills. But beyond just playing the regular game, Portal devs also released a simple-to-use level designer called Puzzle Maker, where players can create their own levels. This takes the learning to another level, since players can now be tasked to create specific environments and situations to test different ideas, draw conclusions, and use that information to adjust the level design until they get it to do what they want it to do. While some inaccuracies in the game physics have been identified, like how if you set up a portal loop to fall forever you'll never actually reach terminal velocity since the portals have a speed limit, this can actually enhance learning if handled thoughtfully. By asking students to make predictions before experimenting, and then to reflect on the accuracy of those predictions after experimenting, students can apply their understanding of physics at a deeper level to identify which elements of the game physics are unrealistic. And as a bonus, one teacher reported that during his portal lessons, he had virtually no issues with classroom management, since the students were focused, engaged, and actively participating in the lessons. Sounds like they enjoyed learning through video games almost as much as Arbor enjoyed eating this non-cake cupcake portal lie cake. What do you do when you make your dog a bunch of video game-inspired cupcakes? You share them with his friends, of course! Did you get a parsnip? <laughs> the vegetable was throwing them off. Yeah. <laughs> The hardest part is getting them to face the camera. Okay. Okay. You want know some of that? <laughs> there you go. Good work. Just a little piece or something. Yeah? Can we go just that? Is that better? You want the parsnips? Oh, here. she took a parsnip. <laughs> that is not yours! <laughs> you want a parsnip? Come here. different pupcake designs investigating the science of life force energy, jump scares, and learning through video games. Plus, some sweet dogs eating some sweet treats. If you liked this video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you soon.